Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> so good to see you today. And I want us to sing my favorite Christmas song, Silent Night. Christmas is all about the birthday of Jesus, isn't it? And so we want to wish him a happy birthday today. And Michelle's coming at this time to sing a song about it.
who it's all about isn't it uh, uh, as I've said many times I love this time of year just because we can even get the uh, the rest of the world to at least acknowledge that, that Jesus came and lived and and that this is the time of year we celebrate him and of course for those of us who know him uh, it, it's, even, it's an even more special time it's good to have all you this uh, here this morning and I want to welcome everybody that's watching online uh, I want to remind you that if you are, are new and you want to receive uh, information from the church, you want to go online and fill out the uh, Connect card where it says uh, uh, you can go to gsbcconnect slash dot info slash I'm new. It's uh, on the screen. You can read it off the screen instead of listening to me uh, botch it up. But uh, anyway, um, that's, that's the place we want to, we want to be able to, uh, to send you information and be able to let you give you updates of what's going on, and that's a place uh, that you can sign up for that. Uh, a couple other things we've got going on. Um, for those that are part of the Awana program, um, we've got to remind you that Awana will uh, be taking a break until after the first of the year, so there will be no Awana this week or uh, the following week. We will, be, we will resume uh, the first Wednesday in 2021, and how many of you will be glad to see 2021 get here? Amen? Uh, let's just hope it's better than 2020. Amen? So... Um, but uh, so, yeah, Awana will be resuming there. Uh, so keep that in mind. Next Sunday, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, also we are uh, just having one service uh, Sunday morning and no, uh, no services Sunday night. So be, be ready for that as well. And, and finally, I want to remind you that Upward Basketball and Cheerleading will be getting started. Uh, the, we'll be starting on January the 11th for evaluations, and we need help. Okay, if, uh, if you worked in Upwards last year, uh, definitely need you to come back. If you've never worked in Upwards, uh, there's a lot of ways you can help some, help some young kids with the basketball or, or, or with the cheerleading. Uh, all areas of Upwards need help. So if you say, well, I might be good at this or not good at that, just show up and we'll find somewhere to put you, okay? So that starts January the 11th. If you want some more information about that, uh, you can talk to Brother Marty or Brother Chris Dietz also, if you can get in touch with anyone. Marty will be back in the foyer after the service. If, if there's any way at all you can help out with Upwards, um, get in touch with one of those guys. But um, again, it's good to have everybody here. Uh, Maybe a little wet today, but uh, thank the Lord it's dry in here, amen? And everything give thanks. We give thanks that we don't have to meet outside, amen? But um, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day, for everything you've given us, Lord. We thank you for your grace, your truth, and your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we have this time of year set aside to uh, acknowledge you coming into the world, Lord. And I pray that you just uh, help us, Lord, to keep our minds on that, and Lord, our eyes on you, Lord. And we ask you, going forward, Lord, that you be with Pastor Freddie as he brings this message, Lord, that you would just speak your words through his mouth, Lord, and touch our hearts, Lord, and give us something to walk out of here and glorify you with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. G 
Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so lonely, meek and mild. New life, new hope, new joy he brings. Won't you listen to the angels sing? Glory, glory, glory to the newborn King. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful child. child. Jesus, Jesus, so lowly, meek and mild. New life, new hope, new joy he brings. Won't you listen to the angels sing? Glory, glory, glory to the newborn King. Virgin Mary was his mother, and Joseph was his earthly father. Three wise men came from the far. They were guided by a shining star to see King Jesus where he lay in a manger filled with hay. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, oh what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so lonely, make it mild. New life, new hope, new joy he brings. Won't you listen to the angels sing? Glory, glory, glory to the newborn King. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Mary's baby. kingdom. What a blessed, how blessed we are to have such a wonderful Savior. Uh, a couple of things that, uh, first, thank you for praying for me. I got along great with my procedures. Got a few little stitch places over on my right eye. Beyond that, everything's good. In fact, I wouldn't know I had had it. That's the, whenever you have procedures and you get along that well then that's, that's a blessing in the long run. All right, a few things. Well, we are closing out this year, as obviously, as already mentioned by Scott, and we do trust in 2021 that we will see a new day. Amen. But we know the one who has already seen 2021, and he holds this world in his hands. And uh, our, you know, whenever we get all upset and worried. Uh, that's not helping anything or anybody. Uh, in fact, if anything, it's a detriment to us. But we just need to worship him and give him praise and glory for what he's done and is doing. But we're also, as we close the year, uh, we're dedicating our Christmas offerings this year to uh, several missionary projects. One is a boat that's going out in the Caribbean. Uh, for those of you who've taken a cruise, uh, you've, you've seen the islands. Uh, it, it's imp uh, I'm, I'm impressed. I've had the privilege of going down. In fact, late 80s the first time. Brother Willie Pender, who we serve and support uh, without Island Ministries and his grandson, Joel, 
Uh, they're in, in largely Haiti, but they've got churches all in the Bahamas. And one of the biggest problems and challenges they have is transportation. Uh, uh, I'll give an example. When I was last there with Brother Willie, he went down and bought a watermelon, and I thought I heard the, the clerk. He paid $20 for a watermelon. A gallon of milk was $10, probably 15 now. Things are just expensive. Gas is unbelievable. They have to import everything. They, uh, they, uh, other than the fish, they go in the backyard. Willie calls, he, he says the Atlantic is his garden. So he'll go out and gather uh, his fresh, fresh fish. And, uh, but I did too also learn, to, well, Juliana, who's now passed away, but she could take grouper and cook it. And you wouldn't know it from a pork chop or a piece of beef. Uh, she, she was explaining how if you treat fish a certain way, uh, other than the texture of the meat, you can make a roast. You can do just about anything that we do here our, with, with our southern recipes. But anyway, pray for Brother Willie, too. He's had some ups and downs. Juliana passed away recently, and, and uh, pray that uh, he, he will be able to resume his activities as he desires to. But anyway, we're receiving funds on the boat for David Ballinger. And then we've got a couple of other projects that uh, we, we want to help meet needs in as well. Down in Honduras, those two, two hurricanes went, came back to back within about two, two or three weeks of each other. And Brother Noe Mendoza, uh, he, he is heavily involved in several good churches there in Honduras. And in fact, his church has set a goal, they have been raising uh, funds to furnish Sunday school material for every child in the country of Honduras. Let that soak. It's not the literature that's the problem. It's the shipping. And see, boats can be very valuable in, in, in moving things from place to place. So. Pray for Brother Mendoza. Pray for the work there in Honduras. And, and, and also the schedule will change next Sunday. Uh, on Thursday night, which is New, uh, Christmas Eve, we'll have communion. Now, we are witnessing this back end of this last surge with COVID. You remember back in November, uh, I had gotten a call from a health official that's in the room with a lot of the conversations are held that that back end was coming. And now I think, that, well, the governor's wife, our McMaster's, she, she has COVID. It, it's spreading. I think they're going to close Georgetown schools. I heard uh, my daughter say Charleston County schools to virtual uh, until we can get beyond this, this, this next wave. Now, we as a church are not going to let up. We're going to be extremely careful that we do practice the social distancing and remind folks about the mask. We don't mandate the mask, but we encourage you. And we have them all over uh, the facilities here, so we've got masks available for you. Uh, but we do know of a number of, of, of churches that have had to that close because of the outbreak within the church itself. We've been blessed. Uh, if, if you don't know that, we really need to shout it out. God's been good to us, and we praise him for that. But uh, these opportunities, as we close the year, uh, we try to communicate those, those to you through email and then some other postings. And Tuesday night, uh, I didn't plan a formal study, but I want to talk to the class with ABI at 7. And uh, I'll do that on Tuesday. The, the virtual, when we do the Bible studies, is the safest format we've got. And we, we're grateful that we can communicate with folks in that fashion. And I think that covers most of the announcements. I do have a note that sh uh, Sheila Woodcock, she has been taken to Grand Strand, and she has AFib. So we're going to be praying for her. Uh, we want to pray for the Benchaw family, the loss of Winston, the baby. And uh, we also want to continue to pray for Lois. Her dad's service was yesterday. 
And uh, we have others here in the church family that, that have special needs. So let's bow our heads together as we look to him in our time first of, of meditation as we reflect on the real reason for Christmas. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your grace. And Lord, so often we view you and, and heaven and all the angelic host from a worldly perspective. And yet we know that's just not reality. We ask you, Lord, to meet the needs that are represented here. Lord, there's some who've got some real burdens. There's some who are in the valley of decision, confronted with, what will I do next? I pray, Lord, you'd bless them and comfort them and strengthen them. And then, Father, we pray for those that are bereaved, especially the loss of the baby. God, comfort the family. Touch them. Strengthen them. All bereaved, Lord. And then, Father, we just want to think about the reason we celebrate on Christmas. And we know it's all about you. You gave your son, your only begotten son, to be our Savior. In fact, not just our Savior, but the Savior of the world. We know that by his stripes, we have healing. We know that it's his blood, his blood that cleansed us from all sin. Lord, we know it's the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, our comforter, the one that comes alongside. And Lord, though we can't see that world this morning, Lord, if we could, I imagine maybe the, this auditorium would be full full guardian angels all the angelic host Lord we know you inhabit the praises of your people and so Lord we look to you and praise you and thank you and we plead your mercy and your grace thank you Jesus now we pray your blessings on the offerings this morning. We thank you for love gifts. We thank you for faithful gifts, sacrificial gifts, the tithe. Lord, we come to return to you first fruits. Lord, we don't want to give you leftovers. We want to give you the first piece. We want to give you the best. Now bless us, Lord. Bless our missionaries that we support every month. We pray that you might be with those that are in harm's way, those serving in some remote areas who have been threatened, areas of hostility to the gospel. Lord, bless them. May they sense and feel our presence in our prayers. May they know that there's a church in Myrtle Beach. And then those listening by way of the internet from around the world will pray in for them. Lord, bless this offering and use it for your glory. But we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. We'll receive the morning offering at this time.
much too young, unprepared for what's to come. A baby changes everything. Not a ring on her hand. All her dreams and all her plans. A baby changes everything. A baby changes everything. The man she loves. She's never touched. How will she keep his trust? A baby changes everything. A baby changes everything. And she just good just plain old-fashioned good more some of those notes 
that a sort of tough came out so smoothly. And I couldn't help but smile. I've had a little bit of time in getting this message prepared. And I have to confess it's not easy when you have um, a lot to deliver and such a little time to deliver it in. And there's always purpose for everything that happens in your life and mine. And it's because God's orchestrated it. That doesn't mean he's, we're not robots. He gave us free will. But we have opportunity. And uh, someone has said confession is good for the soul. And I suppose the day I don't believe will ever come when you graduate from the confessional, meaning you got it all figured out. And you got it with a clear understanding. Or it's kind of like spiritual growth. We don't ever get to the place where we don't need to grow some more. But I'm afraid in this modern church age, we've reversed that. And it's in the scriptures, Laodicean church was lukewarm because they said they didn't have need of anything. Have need of nothing. Back in the day, whenever the pilgrims came here, they had to pray for daily bread. I mean, they had to do it each time they ate a meal. They had to pray for protection from the elements. And then I believe they were overwhelmed by their thanksgiving to God for delivering them on the journey across the Atlantic and all that they endured. And then some died. And so they offered a prayer of thanksgiving. God, thank you for preserving me, for blessing me, for helping me. Oh, I think our pilgrim fathers live constantly were the word of praise and thanksgiving on their lips for what God hath done. But the average today, if we gave you a three by five card when we came in and you had the list of five things that you could pick from, what's your greatest need? Or the best illustration I know, you get in my age group, and some of you are, and you have grandkids and others want, what do you want for Christmas? Truth is, I don't need anything. Do not know of one single thing I can't do without. Now, there wasn't, this time in my life, that wasn't true. I had a want list as long as a 16-year-old. But as we grow older, some things lose their importance to us. Some things aren't what they were. And so whenever we begin to look at the basics, the things that I need, man can't provide. Except pray for me. So we have to look up. Five days to Christmas is how I title this. I've titled it four times. And I know, what, I know what's on my heart. The difficulty is in making the delivery. But I want you to follow me for a moment. And, and just briefly, because this could bog down. And I, I, that's not my intent, my prayer. Because if you, if you don't understand my train of thought, if you don't understand what's on my heart, if you don't understand what I see, then it's going to be in one ear and out the other. I mean, it'll be at 10,000 feet, and we're down here on planet Earth at the ground level of almost sea level. The thing that has overwhelmed me in these last several years, and I cannot explain why I've got some degrees. In fact, I, sometimes you quote them, people think you're bragging, but I'm not bragging. I've learned that degrees are like, I see the curl in a pig's tail, the curl in the pig's tail does not change the flavor of the bacon. It's the same. Our walk with the Lord is flavored by our walk with Him. And that sounds like double speak. But see, we can say we're walking with Him, and that would be true. And then we can say we're really walking with Him, and that would be true. It's how we define Him. Is it that I walk with him where I want to walk? Or do I walk with him where he wants me to walk? You see, we can call it one thing, but in reality, it's neither. 
And often when we think we're walking now, there's one truth that we have to go, go to school on. One, one, one strong, strong truth right here. I'll never, ever walk alone. And that does sound like double speak. If I walk with him, we have, well, I got to go where he wants me to. See, two people can't walk together unless they agree. Well, then how can we walk with him? Because I know there are places I go he wouldn't. And that's in thought life, attitude, down the line. But that just shows us what a gracious, loving God we serve. That he didn't make us robots. Now, how, having unwound that a bit, I want you to follow me for, for just a couple of verses. And then we're going to look at our approach to Christmas, which is in five days. And what should that mean to us, if anything? And then there's a preparation word. I am probably one of the worst about getting everything ready for Christmas. I don't like the Christmas shop till Christmas Eve. I just don't get in the mood. And I don't know whether it's the commercialism of it, but to get in the mood. But anyway, let's follow this thought for a bit. Five days till Christmas. Now what Christmas means to us is going to determine how we spend not just these five days, but every day. It's where is Jesus in our lives? And, and, and having said that, I want you to look with me. Now here's a real reason for the season, and I think you're going to agree with this. In John chapter 1, verse three, first three verses, this is Genesis. This is in the beginning God. But notice, in the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So here, all things, that's you and that's me. He created us. All things were made by him. Everything that we see, touch, feel, smell, experience in any of the five senses, he made it. He made all of it. So in the beginning, God gave his son to be not only our savior, he's also our creator. That's verse three. All things were made by him. Now that's background. Now go with me a little bit further. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said this. If we let passion take the place of judgment, and by the way, he was a Baptist too, so I like to quote Baptist. If we let passion take the place of judgment, could we do that at church? And self will reign instead of scriptural authority? Could we agree with Spurgeon on that? Do you think we might be living in a day where we let self-will reign over spiritual authority, scriptural authority? You see how deep this well is? In the modern day, the modern church era, age, last X number, I've been preaching 50 years, so I've seen a lot of sunsets and sunrises, and I've seen a lot happen in the name of, of church and worship. But we have a tendency to fudge and impose our will over the true teachings of Scripture because we like it. Notice what else he says. We shall fight the Lord's battles with the devil's weapons. And that's the point I want you to see here. Fighting the, the Lord's battles with the devil's weapons. And we notice now, and if we cut our fingers, we must not be surprised. Because God never intended for us to face this world in which we live dependent on the weapons of this world. Right. You see in Ephesians 6, the whole armor of God, the pen I wear. Oh, we, we have the sword of the Spirit. That's the Word of God. We have to use the Word of God. He never intended us to face the battles that we will face as we grow older in the sunset of our years, he never intended for us to face the battles that we face in a, a world that's gone upside down, where right 
is now identified as being wrong and wrong is right from marital laws all the way through to this gender issue we have superseded the word of God with man's law now you're quiet on me this morning and it's just five days of Christmas but don't leave yet now, th th this is insight Spurgeon had. Now, look at this. Ephesians chapter 1, going to do several verses here, so look at it. And I got a, it's kind of like throwing a rock at the pond. We're going to skim across some of these. But if we could, it'd be great. I mean, each, with, each one of these verses would be sermons if we had the time to develop them. But notice he says in Ephesians 1 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in what kind of places? Heavenly places in Christ. Now, notice this. Notice this. Location. We're going to talk a little more about this in a moment. But we're blessed. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For according as he hath chosen us in him when? Before the foundation of the what? Of the world. In the beginning. In the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was nothing made that was made. Was made. John chapter 1 verse 3. Before the beginning he knew us. That we should be what? Uh oh, you laid down on me then. That we should be what? And without what? Before him and what? There's three things. That we should be holy. I mean, that's a good Baptist word. We don't like it too much. People don't, don't call me a holy roller. What would God want to call me? If we're not holy, we're not clean. Would God have us clean? And so we have to understand basics. That's what I'm saying. We, 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 surf, we super in, in, invent. We, we, we put things over the Word of God. And then we rewrite meanings of words like holiness. And, and, and to follow through here, to be without blame. And we have this idea today that, you know, everybody can find some reason for something going wrong in their lives. It's not their fault. When I came along, alcoholism was dealt with as being a sin. Today it's a sickness. Everything else is some kind of addiction. And there's a reason. You could, you, your mama wouldn't let you throw the oatmeal off your high chair. And it warped your personality. So you, you grow up to be some violent person. But if you run the course of this world today and all that's there, it, it's no wonder we got our college kids in what they call quiet zones. Because they've learned to blame everything but themselves for their problems. So if you look at this, you see, without blame before him in love, look at five, having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, we're going to look at the adoption issue a little bit later, according to the good pleasure of his will. Verse six says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the what? In the beloved, meaning we're in the fellowship. Can, can we understand this? That everybody, must be redeemed to go to heaven. Everybody. I mean, there, 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 there's no groups where we go by and call them and we put, well, you got deprived, so you get to go in this room and God owes you a favor, or you got this going on and you got this going on, so you got everybody going through some kind of assembly line in which you identify the issues of life and you blame your lack of spiritual maturity on not handling those issues of life. That's called Christian discipleship. We learn to grow in the grace of God to handle any and everything the devil throws at us. Is that making sense so far? Well, let's go a little further. Seven says, in whom? Look at this verse. In whom we have, what's this word? Redemption through what? His no other way. There's no other redemption except by the blood of Christ. And notice what else he says. 
the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And Ephesians 1, 7 is a great memory verse. Verse 8 says, Wherein he hath abounded us toward us in all wisdom and prudence. 9, having made known unto us the, what's this word? Mystery, Mystery of what? Mystery. Does he have a will? Does God have a will and plan and purpose for your life and mine? Do we conform? Could be a problem if we don't. Notice how he says this. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself. Now we'll change gears for a moment. Let's talk about fullness of time. Five days to Christmas. Galatians 4 verse 4 says, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem, there's that word, that's our salvation, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of what? Of sons. And that goes further. Because, look, and because ye are sons, God had sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And here's this bullet, the most intimate cry. Well, that puzzled me, cry. I said, well, this is a call. Am I called? Does the spirit of God speak to my heart and give me this call of being a son of God? But I learned something. This word crying is an outcry. And in the Greek, you could properly translate it as scream. That the Holy Spirit enters us and screams that we're a child of God. That we've been adopted. Now, if you've been adopted... Or you've adopted a child. How much did you or they have on your adoption? Children wait to be adopted. Some go through foster care to be adopted. But the one making the decision on the relationship of the sonship isn't the child. It's the person wanting to do the adopting. That's what that verse means. It's the Holy Spirit crying. Let me go back. It's the Holy Spirit. He says... God hath sent, you see that word? Sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, screaming, Abba, Father, screaming. You're a child of God. And that Abba, Father, here is an intimate relationship that you only can obtain through a personal relationship, such as my kids, my grandkids, who address me. Some call me daddy, some call me father. I'm dad dad to the grandkids. But I can be in the business of places and hear the voice and hear dad and I know who it is because I'm familiar. I'm familiar with the voice. How familiar are we in our relationship with God? Tells us what Abba Father means to us. Now, we've got five days to Christmas. But should there not be a relationship that you and I have between us and our our Savior that's personal? The heavenly host proclaimed his birth. Now, I want you to see this. We're going to to see this. If you don't see anything else, see this. Look with me, please, in Luke 2. Go there, Luke 2 and verse 8, the Christmas story from Luke. We drop it down a few verses, but look what he says. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of what? Great joy, which shall be to how many people? All people. Look at 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Plan of salvation. But we know in Revelation 13, 8, that that was fixed before the creation of the world. You see it in Revelation 13, 8. The Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. I mean, before anything was created, it was already determined that Jesus would be our Savior. To whom? Was anybody else there? When that declaration was made, go with me. Verse 12 says, And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So here we see this, this clear evidence in Scripture that God was going to use a sign to convince first the shepherds and others that Jesus truly was the Lamb of God. And oh boy, that's tonight's message, by the way. Verse 13 and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly, what's this word? Host, praising God and saying, look at this, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Now here's what I want you to see. Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 38, or 28, rather, we see it, that we see this biography on Satan. We see his sin. We read the I wills. He wanted to, he really just wanted to overthrow God and replace God and led a third of the angels in that rebellion. But note something. He says, glory to God in the what? I didn't understand this until I got to doing a little bit of slow work. It's amazing. When you go cross country, you can fly, you can go by train, you can go by bus, by car, even go by bicycle. Maybe even you could walk. But of, us, of all those named, who would have the most spectacular view of earth? The one walking or the one flying? You see, the closer you get, the slower you go, the more you're going to see. And the slower we go through the Word of God, and the closer we look, and it never dawned on me, that highest is the highest heaven. There's a holy, there's a host, heavenly host. Who's that heavenly host? That puzzled me. I'm reading words. And after preaching 50 years, I wouldn't... I was drawing my own conclusion. That's what Spurgeon said. If we fill in the blanks with ideas we have, and we don't seek a biblical basis for what we're assuming, we can go through life believing it, believing it one way because it was comfortable to us. That's problem territory. Look at this. In Daniel chapter number 7, verse 9, and you 9 and 10, but... I want you to see nine first. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days, we'll identify in a moment, did sit upon uh, whose garments was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flames, and, and, and his wheels, notice now, his wheels is a burning fire. Verse 10, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, and let's do some math. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. What does it read like? Well, it reads like Revelation chapter 4. 
and the scene John saw. It's also found in other chapters and verses in Revelation. This is Daniel's quote. Daniel saw it all. God just kind of pulled the covers back. Now, it's not, it's not the things there that are so symbolic. You've got the wheels and so forth. And, I mean, that's, that's, that's study. We do that in ABI. But what I was missing was the most important things. Can somebody quickly put this together for me? What's thousands of thousands Thousands. Does that have an equal and an end point? Thousand? Thousands. Thousands would be what? Would that be plural? So that could be X number of thousands here, but one here. What is this word? Ministered unto him. Who's him? He's the ancient of days. Who's the ancient of days? Many believe God the Father. And in this passage, they can see both God the Father, God the Son. How big is this heavenly host? You see, we just read. To the shepherds, they heard them singing. Glory to God. And praises on the highest. That's in the highest heaven. Wonder how we'd feel if suddenly we could blink. And open my eyes, and when we did, we could really see who's in the room. We might act a little bit different. See, we think we're alone sometimes, and nobody sees us. But now when it comes to God, not only would there be a host of heaven seeing us, but God knows what we're thinking. He knows our motive. He knows everything about us. Go with me. This is from the Enduring Word Commentary. It's a brand new commentary to me, and I've been impressed with it. But I'm going to read the explanation that I've just shared with you from Daniel 7. And this is how it would have read. This is Daniel speaking. I watched till thrones were put in place. And the Ancient of Days was, was seated. His garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne, notice now, was a fiery flame. The wheels, a burning fire, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand, thousands ministered to him. All I can say is, wow. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. You got two groups. You got one, the ten thousand times the ten thousands who stood. Notice he says stood before him. And then you've got these others that minister unto him. C can I say it right here? What a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God sits on the throne and gave his only begotten son to die on a cruel cross that you and I might have our sins forgiven. It's like the song, He loved me in spite of my sin. He looked beyond my fault. He saw my need. And He gave His Son to meet my need. Five days till Christmas. Does that mean anything? Can I tell you why I see this as being relevant? One day, it's going to be more than a chapter or a verse or a phrase or a word in our Bible. Because those of you who are in my club, 
if the Lord tarries. Now, I'm looking for him to come back at any moment. But if the Lord tarries, I could meet him by way of death. And when I do, everything we've read this morning is going to be a reality in quicker than an instant. I think it's important. And I think if, I, if we continue to conform our view of heaven to the world that we live in and we don't see what God's Word tells us about heaven and the, the highest heaven and hear the heavenly host, that it, the enumeration of the heavenly host, and you got 10,000 times 10,000 who are ministering to Him and thousands times thousands who are standing before Him, how big a spot do you think we're going to be in that crowd? Can I tell you something? He gave his son to redeem me. And I may not even be a speck before the tens of thousands because he didn't give Jesus to die for the angels he gave Jesus to die for you and for me now how big do you feel unworthy yes but we are a treasure to God beyond measure And all he wants is our heart. All he requires is that we love him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were what? Oh, it sounds like the great white throne of judgment to a degree, doesn't it? When he opens the books. And all he's going to do when he opens the book is to look for our name and thank God. Thank God. We're in the family register. One of the host, yes, we will stand and mingle and have fellowship and good times with them. I will meet a lot of angels one day. But only the redeemed will be dressed in white, blood washed. Look at this. God's love. In Romans 5, verses 8 and 9, put these two together. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were, what's the word? Yet sinners, Christ did something. He died for us. Hallelujah. Verse 9, much more than being now justified... That's just as if I never sinned. It's what the justification means. Being now justified by his blood, nothing I've done, nothing I've ever, ever merited, but because of what he did. Look at this. We shall be saved from, what's this word? Wrath through him. Five days to Christmas. Wouldn't and shouldn't that warrant some quiet time where we just get alone with God as we count our five days to Christmas and say, thank you, Jesus. There's more to Christmas than a tree or a wreath or poinsettias or lights or the cookies are the gifts. It's about Jesus. And of all the days in the year that we should go out of our way to praise Him, it's Christmas. Romans 10, 9 says, that Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised Him from the dead. Thou shalt be, what's the word? saved. So you put these thoughts together. 
We've got God commending his love. That's John 3, 16 in Romans. Uh, his love toward us. Christ died for us. And then much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath. And then if I do two things, I have to confess what? That I'm a sinner. I confess my need because I can't save myself. I ask him to come into my heart, forgive my sins, and save my soul. It's the prayer that God always hears. It's a sinner's prayer. And then if you'll notice, he says, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, since you believe in my heart, thine heart, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. So you got one picture, you get saved from wrath. And you got God's plan of salvation that we can be forgiven of our sins. But please keep this in mind. I don't know if there's a schedule of how often the host of heaven come out and look over the redeemed. I don't know the biblical record of it, but I believe they do. Because they know that God gave Jesus to redeem us. They know the price that was paid. They know what the sin debt cost. And it's believed by many who know more in the depth of the theology than I do that they see every believer as a hero. You say, a hero? You say, I'm not a hero. You are to them. You say, well, why? Why? What would qualify me in their sight to being a hero? They know how I've messed up. They know what I battle with. Why, why would they see me as a hero? You see, if no one had accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, though it's a wonderful plan of redemption, it's by his blood we have forgiveness. But it all depended on people. Human people who were created by him to accept it by faith and believe that yes, truly he is the only begotten Son of God. And there's no other way to escape the wrath of God but by faith. For you see, there are going to be a lot, a lot of people who don't make it. The Bible says there are two gates. There's a narrow gate and there's a wide gate. There's a narrow way. There's a broad way. The Bible says that there'll be few who come by the way. That's the narrow way. That's the way of the cross. Because you see, we can't alter God's plan of salvation. He fixed it before he made the world. If there's one thing you take away from this message this morning, you take this home with you. God cannot, he cannot deviate not one iota from his plan of salvation. There's no merit where he weighs some and says, well, he's a pretty good fellow, he didn't get saved, but he's pretty, let's let him in. No, 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 only the redeemed. And here's what happens. When we receive him, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, our hearts. And it's the cry of Abba Father that tells us He's living in us. And Romans 8 goes on to say that His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're a child of God. 
And if a child of God, we need to live for him. That's that mystery that we didn't unwrap earlier. That God put the mystery of the gospel in a manger in Bethlehem among the cattle, the Lamb of God who would redeem mankind. We've got five days to Christmas. But that's what Christmas is all about. Remove the Lamb of God. No salvation. No salvation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us today. Oh, Lord, you know my heart. There's been a struggle, Lord, a struggle in the room. I believe there's a struggle as it was in my heart in the preparation time. And I I pray for those watching by way of the web because in their homes there may be more distractions than here in the service. But I pray, Father, not one, not one, not one would turn his or her back on you. Not not one would look at your plan of salvation in whom we have redemption repeatedly stated in front of us. Not one. Not one of us would look in these scriptures. And turn their back on you, Lord. As we have our heads bowed and our eyes are closed, let me ask you if you know you're saved, heaven's your home, can you lift your hand? You say, preach, I'm saved. I know it, I know it, I know it. I know it. God bless you. Put your hands down. I'm not going to embarrass you. I don't ask you for that. God sees you. He, he sees your heart. All I could see was your hand, but God sees your heart. If this morning you're here and there's a burden on your heart, I invite you right now as we're in an attitude of prayer. You've seen the verses. You know the promises. He said, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised you from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. And so if you're here without Christ or watching by way of the web stream and, and, and today you've never settled it, here's five days to Christmas. But you've never really celebrated the reason for the season. You've never had it settled in your heart, in your soul, that if death were to overtake you or if the rapture were to occur in these moments, that it'd be well with you. I invite you, won't you ask Jesus to come in? Just say, Lord Jesus, I, I, I can't go on any further. Lord, I, don't want, I, I just don't want to keep going like I'm going. I want it settled. I want to know that I know you as my Savior. I want to know the Holy Spirit's cry in my heart, that Abba Father cry. I want to know, I want to know that my family and I can be together in heaven one day. And Father, for those praying for family that are lost, I pray this morning this would be a breakthrough. Pray Satan be bound, I just plead your blood over the souls of men and women who receive you as Savior. Lord, we pray for those that are sick, some in the service not feeling well, facing tests and other issues. God working on their behalf. And Lord, all that angelic host that we've been reading about, I thank you for the guardians who've looked after me. And Lord, I look forward to meeting them one day. I don't know what time will be like in heaven, but I sure would like to spend some time with them. But of course, that'd be after I spend time with you. Now bless us today. Lord, bless our church. Bless services tonight as we see in Scripture where you were really born. The tower of the flock is in Micah 5 2. Lord, help us. We plead your blood and blessings on us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I thank you for your attentiveness this morning. These are, let's say, grave times. There are several places around the world that could just run off, off the track at any, any moment.
There's trouble in India, trouble in China, trouble in several other locations. Do we have any other announcements to make? Yeah, okay. I want, we baptize the next Sunday. Guess what? We got a Chinese couple Amen. who've just gotten saved. <laughs> and guess what? They want to get baptized. Amen. And so I'm going to meet with them this week and next Sunday. And any others awaiting baptism uh, will be prepared to do that next Sunday, which will be the last Sunday in the year. Good, good easy way to keep up with 2020. Yeah, go ahead. I uh, just wanted to remind everybody, I was supposed to mention this earlier, I forgot, but uh, we've got the Christmas ornaments back there for the youth fundraiser. What's on the tree right now is probably going to be all we have, so if you want to get one of those, this is your last chance before Christmas. While they're gone, they're gone. So uh, uh, come to take a look at our, our table back there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, let's stand together. Get your mask. Where's the mask? I lost more of these. Not that what I did. I bought one of those things that you wear around your neck. The only thing that's good for is to hang you. If anybody need one, I got one in my office, I'll give it. That thing like choked me to death. I, I was going to wear it. I got to my office and I took it off because it was the most uncomfortable thing. I don't even like a turtleneck shirt, so I should have known better than that. But my, my son told me to buy it. Listen, folks, at any time, we give invitations here, that's obvious. But with the COVID, we're, we're more restricted. But at any time, if anyone needs counseling or you need prayer, we've got great prayer teams. We've got men in our church who have, have just purpose to be a good discipler. They'll pray with you. Uh, we, we, we can't help you if we don't know how to pray for you. And so we encourage you to let us know. And we're going to use, is it, look, would you peep out and see if it's raining? Okay, because it was. Okay, and somebody said we got snow flurries tomorrow, so. <laughs> who, who knows? No, my secretary told me that. And Karen is never wrong. She, you are dismissed. God bless you. Amen.